Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts. My name is Carl Capolingo. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia, and it is a pleasure to be with you as we delve into the depths of your portfolio, try and find the prospective winners, and maybe cut those prospective losers. Kicking off with a few requests that have come through from Will on Twitter, and he wants to start with uh, BMN, uh, which is Bannerman Energy. It's one of those uranium stocks as well. If you haven't caught it already, I did uh, publish part two of my in-depth review of the ASX uranium sector, and there was also a preview there on the uh, underlying fundamentals of the uranium market. Uh, Bannerman was definitely on that list, so they are operating over there in Namibia trying to get their Itango 8 uranium mine up and running uh, from memory. I think they're um, working towards a DFS, which is due later this year. And uh, from your DFS, your definitive feasibility study, then will come your uh, potentially your final investment decision. So a, a go, no go. They will still need to get some funding to get the mine constructed. However, well, they're all fundamentals. In terms of the technicals, it's looking a bit flat, unfortunately. And uh, we did see a lot of these uranium stocks perk up around about here. Some of them look very, very good, in, in fact, uh, as the uranium price perked up, but that has unraveled slightly. I, I don't think there's any point discussing uranium stock charts without discussing uranium, uh, the price of uranium. But we can see the uranium price has pulled back. So it got into you know sort of the mid 60s, not that long ago in April, and it has uh, pulled back to this long-term dynamic support zone, just under 50 now. So. For any of these uranium stocks we might discuss today, we do need to see that uranium price pick back up. In addition to that, you're going to need to see some of those term, long-term contract prices as well, we call them uh, term prices pick up as well. So that's where the you know, nuclear energy utilities are contracting for long periods of time. So we need a little bit of a catalyst there to get this one moving. What I'll do is I'll quickly uh, head back to our candlesticks. Of course, we have to look at our candlesticks, there we go. And I'm, I'm gonna move on from this one, suffice it to say, it's very flat, it's very neutral. It's not a buy right now. Um, lots of things need to occur for, to get it to a buy. We'd need to see some nice price action come in, so higher peaks and higher troughs. I uh, would also like to see that last trough to second from last peak separation. White candles, yeah, plenty needs to happen here. Could I call it a hold at this stage? I reckon I could just squeak in at a hold, uh, but you can see with the short-term trend, a long-term trend, really starting to establish now the downside, I'm a little bit concerned. I'd say your last point of demand between a hold and sell is probably there. That low is 16 and a half cents. So it starts to close at 16 or lower Then I'm getting really concerned about that one. Wish I had better news for you on that one, Will, but again, uranium price is going to direct us from here. Next one is Paladin, another uranium producer. This one also in Namibia, not far away from where Bannerman is located, but they do have a mine. Uh, so a mine that was producing for many years until they put on care and maintenance. I'm gonna say off the top of my head, it's either 2015 or 2018. I'm sure if you're an expert on it, you'll be screaming at your screen what year it was. Um, but the bottom line is not producing there and obviously cost a great deal of money to keep uh, that mine in a state where it could get back to operational. They're uh, doing and planning a bunch of improvements to the mine to increase uh, product production there as well, and that's going to cost money. So um, potentially they need to raise a bit of money to get that mine back into production, but at least we know there's a defined resource and, and a path uh, to, to production sooner rather than later, certainly compared to Bannerman. Fairing maybe a little bit uh, better than Bannerman in that it's kind of just holding in this long-term uptrend zone, but we can see the long-term uptrend zone really is flattening out. I've got a bit of analysis um, from past uh, Ask the Experts here, probably pointing out uh, that we do have a key point of demand around this level here. It's in that sort of mid-60 zone, about 65 and a half. It looks like um, since that last session when we covered it, it has held there and it's held there reasonably well. I can see you know a few white candles coming in here, but I wouldn't say convincing um, in that there's there's a few black ones mixed in there as well. We are seeing some pressure coming in from uh, this dynamic resistance. So now it used to be support, but once we get underneath them, they can act as resistance. And the big risk here I see is that we, we get uh, pushed back down uh, from that level. And uh, in that case, I think a close beneath 63 and a half. So close at 63 or lower, um, you, it's starting to look a little bit desperate here. And really the only thing holding up is that high there and that is at 60 cents. So if you wanted to be really cranky with it, you could exit on a close below 63. If you wanted to give it a bit more, you could probably wait for a close below 50. Otherwise, I really need Paladin, Bannerman and the rest of them to start doing uh, this sort of price action. 
to make me feel a bit better about things. And it is a shame because I know that these arrows here were pointing back to where it was actually looking fantastic here when uranium prices were at their peak. Next one is SMR, not a uranium stock as far as I know, uh, but it is one that has been on the agenda in terms of uh, coming up in scans. So you can see why it's been coming up in my scans. It's wonderful short-term uptrend, wonderful long-term uptrend. Uh, look at these candles, these just, just a bunch of white candles through here, just amazing, the most amazing price action as well. But just looking at the price action here, and watching very closely for our last trough to second last peak separation, uh, you can see some really great separation uh, through here, through here, uh, really better through here, to be fair. So nice price action on this one. It is, I think, approaching a level where the market is struggling, perhaps struggling uh, to continue with the psychology of, of, of paying up for this and, and, and um, not switching to supply. I'd be a little bit concerned about uh, the last few candles, not exactly screaming by, they're not terrible, but I'm worried that we are going to see some supply coming in at the round number of $3. So I have said this in the past, it's almost worth just knocking a bit out just on the basis of the round number, not mucking around too much. If you then get, and I'll just zoom in a little bit here, if you then get your candle confirmation that there is supply in and around that level, then you know it's just building the case to take some partial profits here. And that candle is looking pretty bearish. Keep in mind, however, that candle is still live. That last one there is still going and we won't know how it finishes until after four o'clock today. So if this um, candle, I guess, sustains in the way it looks now, that would be more bearish. If it closes up and it can do that, close up would be white candle, then probably nothing to worry about. If we're in that $3 zone uh, with white candles, again, nothing to worry about. If we see the black candles come in there, it's worth just doing a little bit of this, uh, we call it managing our exits, okay, which equals minus one third. Uh, why only one third? Why wouldn't you just uh, you know, take all your profits there? Well. You know, it's just such a wonderful trend. You know, we have to trust uh, these trends. And if you had trusted the trend all the way, you're very happy. So why, you know, why would you doubt it now? There's really not a whole lot else uh, to give us any reason to doubt this wonderful trend on Stanmore Resources. Otherwise, I really like that one. And the next one is uh, New Hope Corporation, NHC, which is a, a coal stock, looks, um, also looks very, very good. I'm seeing a little bit of evidence of a, you know reluctance to get through this round number here at four dollars. However, um, it's very little. It's 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 quite uh, meek and mild, isn't it? The supply that's potentially coming in at four, which is great. In fact, you know we saw some pretty nice candle here, topping out at four dollars itself. Uh, and then this one here, uh, the market doesn't look too concerned by that four dollar level. So it's a little bit. Uh, if we go back to Stanmore, it's, I was saying, look, if you see the white candles at three, it's probably nothing to worry about. And I don't think there's a whole heap to worry about here. So this is an absolute hold. I can't see any reason why you would manage your exit just at this stage. If you maybe had taken a little bit off the table here, you know, you're still holding the balance. Would I buy it here? I can't see a great deal of evidence to, to suggest you wouldn't buy it here. It, it just looks so strong. So I'm happy to go buy on this one. But I would counsel that you are a little bit late to the party in terms of when we started picking this up, which um, to be fair is probably around about here. Go check uh, my tweets uh, through here, 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 and here, and here. So um, yeah, look, I think uh, it's an absolute hold and uh, it's a buy because really it's just the evidence is just overwhelmingly skewed towards the demand side, not the supply side. Uh, let's have a look at Whitehaven now, and I suspect we're gonna get a detail on this one. Uh, it looks great. In fact, you can see how it did pause for a little while, didn't it? That $5 gave it a little bit of trouble, but otherwise we're through that now. I can't see any reason why you would sell this. And really, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't buy it either, to be honest. So uh, those last three, Stanmore, New Hope, Whitehaven looking very good. The uranium stocks looking a bit iffy. We're gonna look at uh, NCZ. This one is for Roberto. Uh, some signs of life there, Roberto, not too bad. Look, we, we are in a long-term downturn, that's clear. And you can see how well this long-term dynamic supply zone has been pushing prices down. And look, I don't get in here before the session and paint these on <laughs> knowing where the peaks are. They are there, I have no control over where they are apart from obviously inputting uh, the parameters. You can see some of the parameters there. We've got 21 and 34, which define my short-term trends, and then 144 and 233 EMAs, which define my long-term trends. Why those? They're the ones over a couple of decades of watching stocks trade that I feel uh, really summarize price action over any stock. You'll find any stock index commodity, they work 
really well. When we get above these, that's when this one's going to start to look interesting and really unfortunately not until then. So what we need to see is uh, some more of these great candles we've seen over the last three sessions and move above the long term zone. I'd like to see them pull back and hold and I tend not to put these sorts of turnaround plays in my uh, Twitter feed until I've seen at least this pullback and hold of that long term trend zone. So telling me that it's going from a dynamic resistance to dynamic support. A nice little trough there, well above this little peak here would be great as well, and continued white candles. And especially in this zone here, we wanna see the right candles. What do the right candles look like? Everybody knows what the right white candles look like. We want the white ones that look like this. You've seen me draw them a hundred times in these sessions, but we do always have people that are coming for the first time. And welcome to everybody who's here for the first time. So we call this the Marabozu. Marabozu translated from Japanese means shaven head. So it doesn't have any wicks or shadows at the top. And it's also got a shaven bottom, by the way. And uh, that is a, a, a pure demand side candle. Uh, no pushback on the open. Demand all throughout the day, closing on the absolute high, no pushback at the close. It is the epitome of excess demand of the system. And that's what we want to see when we're looking to buy any stock. So that in there would be wonderful. And the other key candle that we want to see, I might just copy and paste this one. So I don't have to change the colors. Look, it could occur instead of, in addition to, after. It doesn't matter. They're telling me effectively the same thing is that uh, candle there with a the lower shadow. Sometimes we call them hammers and um, I've heard them called pin bars and various other things. But either of those candles or a bunch of them occurring in there would be very positive. Until then, I would be comfortable calling this a hold on the basis that we're seeing some promising signs that this trend might be changing, but I can't get to a buy. Next one is for King. He's asking for GNC, which is Grain Corp. I think this looks great. And now, obviously, we've talked about wonderful short-term trends, wonderful long-term trends, but we just need to be attentive for any signals that, that those trends might be changing. And I'll just point one out. I know I keep going back to this one, <laughs> Novonix, because it's just such a great example of a market darling. Wonderful uptrends seemingly going on forever, but then that trend changing. And we go through this demand side phase, excess demand through here to where supply starts to build, causes equilibrium in the market, where supply is now matching the demand coming into the market. And then basically we, we run out of demand and with supply still in the market, we see that price go down. So I'm not saying this is going to happen on GNC anytime soon, but I'd put to you it's going to happen on GNC sometime in the future. It, it's inevitable that stocks go through these phases and we just need to be attentive for the signs that it might be starting to go through that phase right now. The only thing that I don't like about this are these uh, this, this this black candle here. Last week, we talked about this idea of a trend killer, didn't we? This, this, these big black candles that tend to act as trend killers. Uh, well, there we go. We talked, we used Novonix as our case study, and we said that uh, this one here is the trend killer. So this is your, your trend killer right here. Now, you can see just how huge that one is. Grain Corp's nowhere near that bad. Well, this candle's not that bad, but it is getting my attention for a couple of reasons. So I'm a little bit concerned. This candle here, so this is a really strong demand candle. It's one of those uh, pin bar candles or hammer candles we talked about. So this is, you know, excess demand. And I'd go so far as to say really strong excess demand as well. And at the bottom of that candle is where that demand started. So if we take out that low where that demand started, it's kind of telling me that uh, this demand uh, is really being met, uh, being met in the market, okay? And that is the first step, isn't it? It's the first step of the process in going from a demand side market to an equilibrium market, okay? Where supply is now meeting the demand. And assuming that um, that supply dissipates over a short period of time, the demand still in the system, we will see this trend continue. And I do believe that's the highest probability outcome here. However, if for whatever reason demand does dissipate because we've created a bunch of profits in the stock. Why have we created a bunch of profits? Well, it's gone from you know $3. I've put this you know, on Twitter almost every day for the last three months. We've created a lot of profits and therefore if that demand dries up and people start to see those profits evaporate, that supply will come out, will, will, will cause that trend to go from equilibrium into supply side. We're probably getting a little bit far ahead of ourselves here, but I do want these sessions to be as educational as they are buy, hold, sell. What do I do right now, Carl? Okay, uh, give a man a fish, he'll, he'll eat forever sort of thing. Okay, what are our exit points here? Okay, and look at, the, look at the language I'm using. What are our exit points here? I'm not quite talking about buy points just yet. This little shadow here is important, I think, and that low there is a 9.72. Also, the $10 round number is important. Obviously, getting above it's 
good, getting below it's not so good. I'd say if we close beneath that, you would be looking to further manage your exits if you haven't already. You know, that, that candle there, it's enough really for me to say, look, oh, I'm not as comfortable holding my full position here. Then I go, well, how did, how did we back it up? And another couple of black candles, these are good. And then if we get below that low, uh, that, what's that low there? 981, which we did. I mean, we tickled it, didn't we? Uh, 981, oh, that, sorry, there, there it is there, 972. So we tickled that low as, as, as well. Goes to show, look, the, the last line of, of defense, the last line of demand is coming in here. If we were to close beneath 972, I'd be exiting a little bit more. So let's go, let's say we manage uh, our exit minus one third potentially on that one and the, and the two black candles that came after it and then we're saying that if we uh, close and i do want to see it close at the end of the day because you can see those lower shadows um, just tickling that level uh, we need to see that that whilst the lower shadows are there the demand is still there think about it whilst the lower shadows are there the demand is still there if we close beneath those lower shadows by definition the demand is gone and that should scare you as a shareholder and if we get down here close down here uh, equals minus one third. Okay, that would be my suggestion. Obviously, this is general advice. Do with uh, this analysis as you please. But otherwise, it's a strong hold. Until then, I know some of these are counterintuitive, but they're based upon contingencies. It's a hold until then because of those short and long term trends. Would I buy it? No, I don't think there's enough in it to buy it just yet. I would need to have confidence that this pesky supply that has started to you know, uh, manifest itself in the system, that we've, we've taken that out. Now, how and when and where do we take that out? Well, look at this big black candle. Look at this little shadow here. And this, they all align. Look at this, this one, this one, this one, this one. They all align. That's where the supply is coming in for whatever reason. Okay. If we close above that, guess what? That supply is gone and we're off to the races again. Fascinating, fascinating case study there, King. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Next one is for Andrew T.E.R., which, oh, uh, makes me happy. <laughs> makes me happy when I see that. So uh, wonderful. I haven't looked at this for the last few days. Um, I've just been so busy doing other stuff here for Think Markets. But I have, yes, look, I've been a, a big um, proponent of this one. It's just so wonderful to see that one going up. And I can't see any reason at this stage, Andrew, to manage your exit. Now, having said that, let me check. It is at 11.22, so we do get another update. And the reason why I'm looking off screen is you can't see everything that I'm doing over here. I'm gonna click on my data provider, which is Norgate Data, and they will give me an update as of the hour, and I get it 20 minutes past the hour. And we can see it actually went a little bit higher there, didn't it, and a little bit of a shadow. So as long as the shadow doesn't build any further from here, I don't think there's any reason to manage your exit. Uh, this is an absolute hold. If you don't have it, I can't really tell you to buy it now. I mean, I've been telling you to buy it for a long time, but I can't tell you to buy it now because it's just too far away from my comfort zone, which is where that long-term dynamic trend is. So we're looking for, for places where come back to that zone and then looking for the candles to tell us, or well, probably didn't see it to here actually, uh, that we should, should be getting back in. So sort of there's this you know, touch of the zone and then the nice candles coming in, okay? We're not there yet, okay? So it's definitely a hold. I don't think you need to manage your exits, but probably not a buyer right now. Again, might sound counterintuitive counter because you might've heard me in the press saying, look, I think I've got a valuation of 120. And you might say, well, hey, it's not 120, so I should be buying. Okay, well, yes, but uh, you know, for me, timing is very, very important. Next one is BRL, Bathurst Resource, another one which makes me happy. I'd be happier if uh, I was seeing some white candles <laughs> like on TER. I don't think there's anything to panic about yet, Andrew. And I, I know this is one that's done really, really well. Oh, look, there you go. Just just made sense to me, didn't it? This 150. Okay. And, you know, bring, come, this is why we tune in on Tuesdays. You know, on, tw on Twitter, I, I look at uh, great trends and stocks I like, and we, we talk about, you know, that's about the getting in. And really, it's here that we can discuss potentially the getting out. Look, 150 is a little bit of a round number. It's not one of those killer round numbers. You know, two, uh, three, four, they're, they're more important uh, in this price range. But you can see there's a little bit of psychology coming in. Now I'm going to guess that potentially we spent some time at a dollar, which means you're you know, you're kind of making 50% uh, profit here. And then I'm going to guess around about 75, we probably spent some time as well. And therefore you're doubling your money. So it's, it's, it's frustrating. I know how um, silly and fickle uh, investors are sometimes, but this is it. Uh, people will tell you, I oh, know it's earnings, you know, it's future earnings and cash flows and uh, all of these wonderful things or sentiment. I don't know, supply and demand, but sometimes it is just as silly as people have doubled their money, you know, and that's why they want to supply. It's a trends are fine. No, no issues here. I don't think there's enough in it to manage our exit just yet, but you know, a couple of little things there creeping in, we'll keep an eye on. I'm pretty happy to hold that one. Where am I going? I'm going over here. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for those two. 
SYA, what a monster this one was, just you know, again captured the, the market's imagination and all the chat rooms that I do like to follow. Geez, they got excited about this one, didn't they? All worked up. And you know, we know better, of course, than to just continue to hold shiny new things because they were once shiny. Now, we, we because we know, we know about these things um, called trends, and we know that we need to be attentive for when trends change, and we know that you know it, it's inevitable that any stock cycles from uh, excess demand to equilibrium potentially into excess supply and uh, maybe that's what we're seeing here i think it's starting to look a little bit dicey so if it closes beneath this level here closes beneath there i'm starting to get concerned it actually tickled it today because that would really i think establish uh, this this short-term downtrend the long-term trend maybe you could argue is still intact and there might be some uh, dynamic support around about 20 but i can't see anything too exciting in the technicals here to tell me that we would buy it and we're pretty close to not even wanting to hold it we talked about those those trend killing candles uh, that really looks like one there especially being backed up by here if you combine those two together probably does you know qualify as a trend killer especially when it comes so soon after pretty nice candle there so this is people moving back in trying to buy the dip thinking it's cheap believing that story and then you've got the, the, the real supply coming in and wiping them out and it just puts more people in a loss so we know there are a bunch of people in a losing position here we've just created a bunch more and all of that it becomes what we call latent supply in the market supply that uh, really is uh, waiting to die waiting to get out hopefully at break even because when you get in you say well i'm not going to sell it's a long term it's got great prospects whatever it is and you know, read you read that annual report again convince yourself to hold on 20 10 whatever i tell you what if it snapped up if it popped up to 36 the next day where you got in you'd be out in a flash despite all of those wonderful long-term benefits that you told me about so all of these break-even points represent latent supply. I can't see anything great in there, and I'm not trying to be nasty, and I'm not trying to be negative on saying I'm just literally calling it as I said. I don't make the candles. I just read them. The question was, can it recover? Took a beating after the report. I didn't even know about the report. Sorry. But I can tell you supply is rife in the system. Uh, we also hold Sheffield Resources and Latin Resources. Let's have a look at those as well. Looks fine. Looks better than uh, than Sayona. Uh, I would not suggest to you that this is a trend killer at this stage, and I would suggest to you that these are very important demand side candles that Sayona is lacking. So whereas I'm concerned about Sayona, I'm actually far less concerned about this one. Hey, it's not shooting the lines in terms of I'd go and buy it right now, but I can definitely get to hold on that one. I think there's enough in it, just you know, in terms of balance of risk reward, to see how this one plays out. Clearly, we need to get above here. This is the key level now. If we can close above that high there, which is 58, then we have taken out that bit of supply that was coming to the market. Actually, it's going to look very, very good. And I certainly would probably start tweeting about it again around that time. So definitely hold that one. That looks pretty good. And Latin Resources looks better than Sayona, maybe not as good as the last one there, Sheffield. Again, I wouldn't call this one a trend killer, but it's not great. We need to see it get back above there pretty quickly. Otherwise, it could be a more prolonged and protracted sideways trend for these ones. Okay, let's keep moving. And now we're going to head to a fuel, F-U-E-L. Uh, that is the ETF representing a bunch of energy companies. Okay, and uh, head to the website, obviously Google what is in there, but you're gonna have probably your Exxon Mobiles and the likes. I think it looks wonderful. I can't fault this one, bottom left, top right. No complaints. Uh, we're not going to, we, there's no point looking at price action here. It's, price action is meaningless because it's representing a bunch of um, companies that, that are constituents of this index, but otherwise it's an absolute hold. In fact, I'd be happy even to go a buy here. Uh, certainly the uh, crude oil price still looks very, very strong. That one's for James. Next one is VMY. This one's for Fiona. It's looking a bit flat, unfortunately, at the moment. Another one of our uranium stocks suffering on the back of that pullback in uranium prices. So I'm gonna go ditto on what I've said about Bannerman and Paladin and say that, yeah, look, the last line of uh, hope, the last line of support there, that low 15 and a half, so close at 15 or lower, it's starting to look a little bit shaky. I wish I had better news again on these. 
WAR is the next one, which is the stairway to heaven. I love it. I can't see any reason why you would manage your exit apart from the fact that it's at 15, but it doesn't look like we're panicking a whole lot at 15. You know, once we get into the tens, 15, yes, I know it's a multiple of five, but really I think markets are more concerned about 10 and then 20. But yeah, you know, no surprise, a little bit of a, a pause here at 15, but nothing too sinister in the candles to suggest that we can't continue to hold this one. In fact, you know, probably buy it even if it comes back to this long term trend zone with a few nice white candles we've discussed what they are long term trend up short term trend up it just looks wonderful and this this one again is another chart that makes me very very happy so daniel i would suggest to you that uh, we continue to hold on to that one this one's from barry brain chip i think it still looks very very good clearly clearly there is some supply coming in here you know this shadow and then today's black candle is not great it may well induce a little bit of pullback into this zone here that high there is 122.5. So you know, I want to see it continue to close above 122.5. And, and then with the right candles, I think you can buy it in this zone for the next leg up. Otherwise, I'm still happy to hold. Is that a trend killer, uh, those two together? No, I don't think so. Uh, they're not great. And you know, this is where you start to become more attentive. You pay more attention to a particular holding. Otherwise, I think the volume looks good. I like the supply removal here, uh, getting it going again. Um, a little bit here might be telling me there's a bit of supply in there, but no, thus far, the demand has been mostly up to the challenge that that supply is creating. Supply is definitely in the market there. Bean Communications doesn't look great. I know it's one that has looked good in the past. Unfortunately, I think um, it has transitioned. And again, getting in is, is great, of course, but you know, getting out for me is far more important. So you know, when we transition clearly here from clear up trend into the supply zone. And then we've talked about so many times today, this idea of after we flatten out, um, what are those key levels that we need to be mindful of? You can see how we kind of broke through there, came back, tested it, and now we're coming back down again. So short-term trend is down, long-term trend now, I do believe is um, established to the downside, and I'm struggling to find a reason to hold this one, unfortunately. So what could change that for me? You need to see a bunch of white candles coming in pretty soon. So, you know, X marks the spot in here, otherwise it's, it's not looking so great. That one was for Rob. This next one is for Chris. He's asking for MLX, which is Metals X. Ouch. Haven't watched, haven't looked at this one for a while because it hasn't been coming up in my scans. Why? Because it's uh, unfortunately turned that little corner, hasn't it? It didn't give us a great deal of indication it was going to do so, to be fair. But we have looked at this pattern a number of times today. So it's this pattern here. Again, just trying to tune your eyes into this pattern here. And we find that sometimes when they break beneath that short-term trend zone, they break beneath that important trough here, which took out a bunch of other ones, uh, they can fall fairly quickly. It's got itself back into the long-term uptrend zone, but this doesn't look like support here now, does it? In fact, it looks like resistance. And the risk there now is that we break through here and then we're down again. I think there's just enough in it to hold it on the basis of this candle, this candle, and a couple here but it's certainly not a buy and I'm growing concerned. On a break below that low there, 45 and a half, so close at 45 or worse, then I think you have to have to take your cues from the market here on this one. What could make it better? We wanna see this white candle improve today. We wanna to see a cluster of white candles come in. We wanna see it close above 55, quick smart, getting above that long-term trend zone, telling us that, okay, it is acting as support. And then we've got to do high peaks and troughs. There's a fair bit that kind of needs to happen from here before, it will look like this, before we're going to get too much more confident on Metals X. So a bit concerned about that one. The next one is going to be Neo Metals, which is another one I haven't looked at all that much recently. Again, it's just stopped coming up on the scans and it's going to be ditto on this one. So it's, it's, it's just looking at how the trends can change at the top there and a pretty clear cut as well if you're reading the price action how we did see that sort of shift through here two dollars another reason to manage your exit there up around that round number potentially the candles were black uh, this was a good candle though that would that would have fooled me to be fair that one there looked pretty good but again when you, when you get these good candles amongst it you know some things you, you're just kind of watching um, you know look, look for a close beneath the low of that candle demand, 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 and then a close beneath that, that demand is met. Okay, so here's, uh, here is the excess demand, and uh, here uh, the demand uh, is now met, uh, and that, that does give us question marks. I'm going to go ditto on this one as to where to from here. It is, it is in better shape than Metals X, simply because it is actually looking like it is uh, holding this long-term uptrend zone. 
these candles actually are pretty good. Let me get rid of this stuff here uh, because I want to point out some candles I do like here. So this one, this one, and this one, very good. The fact we've got a little trough appearing here above this trough is also good. And this one developing today is nice as well. So look, I'm, I think we're out of the woods on a close above 145, okay? And then I'll actually assess it there for a potential buy after this pullback. Until then, it's probably, uh, well, it's not probably, it's, it's a hold and it's a stronger hold. I think the metal's X. Next one is ESS. This one's for Andrew, which looks really good actually. Um, so we've seen some of those things happening here that we'd like to see happen on near metals and on metals x so we're actually seeing uh, this move back into the right price action we're seeing some nice candles coming in i know it's the short-term trend zone not the long-term trend zone but we're seeing the price trade back above that so that's actually looking really good certainly a hole i can't see any reason why you would exit it would i buy it oh i'm pretty close i'm a little bit concerned about this i think this is a bit scary see this what this one here and then this one here and then this one here so I wonder, I absolutely hold, but I'm, I'm going to refrain from buy just because I'm worried about the excess supply that might be just sitting around here lurking in the system that could get in the way of a buy at this level. Okay, so from a reward to risk, where might we be getting out? Well, probably on a close below this, close below 50. And then if we're getting in at 60, we've got 10 cents downside and, and you know really 10 cents upside, it's probably too finely balanced there maybe to buy. But look, absolute hold, I can't fault in terms of a hold, Andrew. Next one is COI, uh, which looks pretty good, Comet Ridge. Nothing really sort of uh, species ending in terms of the candles there. So I can't tell you that there's this clear sell signal here. Otherwise, you know, it's hot it's holding this. Um, it's just pulling back in, in the face of what is a broader, weaker commodities sector. Otherwise, yeah, look, not too bad. Yesterday's candle, a bit indeterminate, but at least we've got a lower shadow here at 15. That's the key level now. I don't want to see it close beneath that, but otherwise, you know, happy to hold. I can't really buy it on the basis that there's not enough demand side signals to buy, but otherwise, it still looks pretty strong. DEV, another one of our uranium stocks, but also has some other interest out there, and I think they've got a nickel project, a little bit of a sideways pattern. Unfortunately, testing the bottom end of the range, not the top end of the range. Next one uh, for Sandeep is. PLS, and we'll do some more of these lithium stocks, and we see our scratchings on the screen from last time. <laughs> and I'm going to say uh, that the scratchings were pretty prophetic uh, in terms of, you know, we, I don't think we did this one last week, so probably a couple of weeks ago, in terms of the things we would need to see Pilbara do uh, before we got any more excited about it. And it's kind of done a lot of those things in terms of the price section. Maybe it hasn't done a lot of those things in terms of the handles. So yeah, there's some decent candles in there, but I would, have, would prefer to see a few more lower shadows. Look, other than that, uh, it's, a, it's a very good turnaround. And it does look now that this long-term trend is holding. In fact, we may even be uh, reversing that short-term trend. So I'm going to say, uh, as, as bearish and negative as I've been on these ones, pretty much, uh, certainly since here, uh, but for quite a while now, these are starting to look good. So let me get rid of all of this stuff and have a look at it with fresh eyes. Okay, so I like this here, the price action looking pretty strong, okay? We're seeing a little bit of compression in around that $3 level. Maybe there's no surprise to that. In terms of uh, potential points of supply, pressure points on the way back up, I think there's a little one here. And then there is clearly a big one here and then a massive one up here, okay? So in terms of understanding your reward or risk, we're looking at potential downside, which I think is probably here. If we're close beneath here, that is a deal breaker. And therefore you can see you've got a little, a little bit of trouble here and maybe a one-to-one -one into that top of that range there. So on balance, you know, you could make a case for, you know, one-to-one -one is the minimum uh, you'd want because who's to say it's going to stop there? It could go to six, okay? Enough in the candles. I'm okay with this one. Certainly for a hold, would I upgrade it to a buy? Would I upgrade it to a buy? Hmm. Again, I'm looking for signs of supply. I'm, I'm, I want easy buys, okay? I want easy buys, like Terramin. I'm looking at these, okay? I'm looking at all of this. It, it, it was just such convincing supply through here, and therefore it may create issues. Is this the best? Is this a 10 out of 10? I, I can see a lot of good stuff in there for a hold. I, I think I'm just going to pass on a buy, okay? And if I have to spend that much time thinking about it, Maybe that gives you a bit of a message. Sandeep's also asked for Sayona, which I've covered, and now we'll do LEL, which uh, looks good. <laughs> I reckon I could, I reckon I could get to buy on this one because we've got we've got less 
stuff in the way. Um, that's not great, we're, but we're over that. We've passed that, we've eclipsed it, we've taken it out. So really it's just that one uh, to get through. Actually, this looks pretty good. I think I could get to a buy on this one. Yep, it's clearly there's gonna be supply in here, but on the basis of reward to risk, hmm, I reckon there's more than one to one on that. So reinforcing everything I've said, I like this one, Lithium Energy Limited. I'm happy to go buy on that one. We got there in the end. Netflix is the next one. Uh, it looks great. I'd almost, I reckon I can almost get, get to a buy on that one as well. It's very similar to the last one. I do like a lot of the price action in here, so you can see how we're going with our last trough to second from last peak separation. I know I'm stylizing a little bit, but they're, they're the big ones I think you need to worry about. So pretty good there, popping back up, some nice candles off the dynamic support zone. Long-term trend is turning, volume looks good, a lot of interest coming back into this one. So powering through here, supply removal, a little bit less on this one, that's okay. We should have removed that supply. So we should have less uh, volume to interact with on the supply side now. And the demand is still there. How do I know the demand is still there? Because the candles are wide. So potentially with diminishing supply and consistent demand, I think this one can go up. I'm happy to go, I'm gonna go buy on that one. I know today's candle is not ideal, but today's candle is still live, isn't it? So I like that one. CXM. I don't think I'm gonna to get to a buy on this one. It's, it's not terrible. Uh, it, it's doing a lot of the things we've seen on the last couple. It's just, I don't pick the order, you pick the order of what we talk about. But isn't it coincidence that we're just sort of having a few that are coming back from uh, their sell-offs with some uh, good price action actually. Uh, you know, long-term zone held short-term zone. The, the only thing that's maybe making me a bit sad on this one, potentially, I don't like this candle. Okay, I don't like that one. <laughs> Uh, and this is a that's that's your species ending um, trend killing event. So plenty of supply coming in, probably from this level up here. Uh, it's not terrible. Look, I could definitely get to hold. I'm just not going to go a buy at this stage. Hey, a nice white candle in here, a nice lower shadow, and then I could see um, certainly see myself upgrading this one. So I'm going to go hold, uh, not quite buy on that one. That one is for Andrew. Let's get to Roberto. He's saying given tax year and selling in June. How do you factor in or discount that in charting? I don't think I need to discount that, Roberto, because I think um, any of that, and it can happen, it will happen, not saying it doesn't happen, will become part of supply and demand, uh, won't it, and potentially supply. If there's too much supply, not enough demand, prices are gonna go down. If that supply hits the market and there's plenty of demand to suck it up, it won't matter, or prices will still go up. So I'm not too fussed about that one. I'm happy just to let the charts tell me what they tell me. And we're going to go to ADN which is Andromeda Metals, which I can do very quickly. And I'm going to say that there's very little in here to tell me to buy this one. You know, look at the candles, look at the price action, look at the lack of interest. Volume's gone back to zero after this announcement here, whatever that might have been. I can't see any reason to buy it. I can't see any reason to own it, unfortunately, Carlo. I think 10 cents a share is 10 cents a share that you could put into any, any of the other buys that I talked about today and get a better result. Okay, so. Again, I don't make the charts. I don't try to be overly negative on anything. I just simply call it as I see it. And I can't see the market is really excited about this. And I can't see people falling over themselves to say, this is the one I wanna own over everything else. Next one is from Jill, BBUS, which is the uh, shorting strong bear. I've kind of talked about this before, so maybe we need to head back and look at our, our NASDAQ chart, which I'm always happy to do. And here we go, NASDAQ. I mentioned in my update, my, I do a weekly analysis session, it's on YouTube at the, um, at the moment. And I talked about this candle here uh, being you know, indicative of some demand coming in the system and potentially also reinforcing that demand is around that 11,000 handle. A pretty good candle last night, I thought actually, if you blend those two together, you do get a nice lower shadow, and therefore I think there is scope for us to push into higher levels. However, we're going to continue to be resisted by this short-term trend zone. Until we close above, close above that low there, that low is 12,202, uh, or let's call it 203 to be safe. I don't think I'd be getting very bullish on the NASDAQ, but I don't want to be overly bearish just on the basis of these candles just yet. Okay, so I know that's a bit of a 50-50 bet, but let's face it, these, these candles are indicating 50-50 in the very short term within uh, short and now established long-term downtrend. So I, I, you know, I guess, Jill, uh, I'm hoping not to sound like a cop out here, but you know, kind of make it that what you will for the BBUS and the BBOZ uh, is for the Australian one. Let's have a look at the Aussie market. Uh, so we're gonna to go to XJO. 
you know, this is kind of doing some of the stuff we, we, we don't want to see the NASDAQ do when it gets to its short-term trend zone. So look at what's happening in here. And I know I've drawn this uh, pink zone. That's been there for a few weeks because it's indicating where there may be resistance in the market. And we're just seeing a little come in here, but it's such a little. And, you know, I'm happy that that is higher than that. Uh, and it's very 50-50, isn't it? It's very 50-50 in the short term. Longer term, uh, that does concern me. But, you know, there's also that. I don't think we can get a more 50-50 uh, chart than that, okay? And it's not me trying to sit on the fence. Sitting on the fence is, tends to be rather uncomfortable. You don't want to stay there for too long, but it just can't see any reason to be making big bets one way or the other uh, on that chart and the NASDAQ. Uh, whilst the trend is more established to the downside, there's still, you can easily find some reasons that uh, we could get a little rally here over the next few sessions. Next one is from Michael, and now he is asking for ELD, which looks very strong. We are seeing a little bit of supply coming in around this $15 level. You know, did it spend a lot of time at 10? Not really, so probably not a whole lot in that. Uh, as I said before, 15, not one of those um, key uh, round numbers that I'd be too concerned about. Otherwise, what a great trend. I can't fault this. It's absolutely a hold. Would I buy it? It's a little bit far away from my zone. So let's see a little bit more of a pullback. Probably going to get a pullback from this candle today. There's enough supply in the system, I think, to just facilitate a little bit more of a pullback. Maybe even to 1450, 1460. Probably coming back if you look, there's a little peak here. All right, so there's a little peak here. So if we go peak, trough, peak, and then we go peak in that level. And if we get the candles, that we talked about earlier on, uh, those white candles in there, that would be the point, then I can upgrade it to a buy. But for now, happy to go hold. I don't think today's candle is sinister enough to, to say that we need to manage our exits on elders just yet. What I can do very quickly is see if we can get some fundamentals on this. I don't want to forget the fundamentals in these. Um, I know many listeners are probably skewed to the technicals like me, but I do know I have some diehard fundamental analysts out there, and it doesn't take us long uh, to do a quick checkup on this. So let's uh, match the September 22 with September 22. Let's check our brokers. We have five buys, three holds, two sells, a little bit mixed there to be fair, and the price target is only just above where uh, the price is now, pretty much around those highs, isn't it? Sort of 1582. In terms of the earnings per share growth, well, I think there's absolutely a very low chance of them achieving 0% growth. Brokers are a little bit bearish, and we need to get our PE uh, target right. Okay, so don't worry about the, that showing overvalued there because at 10, uh, that is too low for this one. Historically, uh, wrong, wrong line, historically, you know, 20 is, is probably not unreasonable. Certainly 16 is holding it to a very high account. And I probably even could go into an 18. Um, and, the, and if we go dynamic overall, 16.4, the price is a bit that low. My model is saying it's not that cheap. Um, and the reason why my model is struggling to find the value in it is because we've got net net zero earnings growth. So we're kind of saying, well, 15 is not a terrible PE compared to say the target, but without any earnings growth, why would you own it? Okay, so Elder's not exactly um, screaming by there on the fundamentals from my valuation standpoint, but the brokers are probably seeing a fairly um, reasonable valuation at current prices. The next one, New Farm, is one that I do want to look at today because, wow, it does give us this is great learnings, isn't it? Number one, agricultural stock, okay, so never trust them. Okay, uh, number two, doesn't mean you can't trade them. Okay, and we're only gonna be trading them whilst the trend is up. And we have to be so super attentive for these ones uh, when we see big supply events here that take out nice little demand candle here, nice little demand candle here, nice little demand candle here. Well, it was, took out two or three of them, three of them, didn't it? Uh, so that would be my first sign that something is wrong. Uh, would I manage my exit here? Honestly, no, I think I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, uh, I'm gonna say benefit of the doubt exit uh, equals no not there but i hope people are now looking at this and screaming at their screen going carl carl you have taught me exactly where i do need to manage my exit and i'm all over this one and i reckon uh, this coming in under this okay that candle alone would lead you to sell on the next day uh, and potentially potentially going one third so minus one third on that and now you couldn't see that the next day was actually pretty good could you and you would have just said, no, no, I don't like that. I, I, I'm not happy anymore. I'm going to go one third just to be safe, to take some profits. I've still got two thirds of my position. And then hopefully you're all screaming at your screens going, hey, Carl, I don't like, I don't like the fact that it got below there, but hey, it didn't close below there. There it did. There it did, Carl. So there I'm getting really cranky. In fact, forget what happened here. Looking at that, that is everything we talk about, isn't it? In terms of understanding how trends 
at least in the short term, begin to change. And then I reckon you're going one third there. And then right here you go, oh, well, holy dooly, happy days. My final third, I'm actually making a bit more money on. I go, oh, am I disappointed? that um, I sold pretty much at the low, then no, I don't care, who cares? You know, I've made good profits on this one. Uh, and if it goes back up, I've still got some holdings. It needs to take this out. It didn't, did it? It didn't, it balked. It balked at that level. Look at this candle and this candle here. And if you're really aggressive, you'd almost go one third on the open of the next candle, right, right here, because this is not good. These two together, not good coming in where they did, but even if you miss that one, 100%, you are getting out at the close of that one, or it would be in the open of this one. So you are officially minus one third on this one. So on that basis, and I cannot give you any more comprehensive analysis than that, I would have to say that this is not a hold for me, and it's uh, certainly not a buy. Uh, and that's how you could have managed your exit on that one. Uh, and it's, yeah, you, I know for the person who's asked this, um, is shouting at the screen, hey Carl, well, that's bloody useless to me now, isn't it? Uh, why, don't you, um, <laughs> why don't you tell me about this weeks ago? Well, that's what these sessions are about. I've told you how to do this in so many sessions prior to this one. You have to take some responsibility and start to apply some of these things. Now, maybe Michael wasn't, uh, he's only just joined us today. So, you know, but hey, this is about learning how to read the signs. For me, I look at candlesticks, it's, it's, like, reading, it's like reading words. Uh, on a page, it's like reading, you know, a paragraph, uh, then, a, then, a, then, a, then a chapter, um, then a book, and then, you know, like Harry Potter, uh, volumes one to eight, isn't it? It's, it's, it's so wonderful that we have these tools. And I said last week that we're not just bumping around in the dark, <laughs> bumping into furniture with our portfolios. The market is giving us all the information we need to make our decisions. We just need to learn how to listen to the market. Uh, how are we going for time as usual? Uh, terrible on time. Stop typing them in. We are going to go in fast forward mode now. GRR, wonderful, wow, it just makes me so happy. Do you need to manage your exit? No, absolutely, oh. I, I've, I've no more words for that one. It's amazing, uh, thank you, Michael, different Michael. Now, uh, can I comment on MAD? Let's have a look at this one. It's disappointing, lots of signs in there that we needed to manage our exits on this one. Can it hold here? Maybe, uh, do I wanna give it the benefit of the doubt? Oh, probably, but I wouldn't be doing it on a full position. That's disappointing. There's, I think there's better things out there for our money, unfortunately. Ross, Anthony has got MGX. MGX looks good, not as good as Grange. Happy to hold it. Don't think I'm gonna get to a buy just yet, but not to say that that can't happen. If we continue to see some nice price action, so something like this would be good uh, with some really nice candles, some grange like candles. But otherwise, short term trend it still looks pretty good, and the long term trend I think is changing back to the upside. So, you know, medium to longer term, I think this is okay too. So, I'm happy to hold MGX. That one's for Anthony. Uh, we've done PDN, we've done BMN, we haven't done BOE. Thanks, uh, Anthony, for giving me now every uranium stock out there. I don't mind this one, it actually probably looks the best out of a lot of them. It's probably the one that's closest to getting to mine. So in that case, you know, you can see why it's got some relative strength. It doesn't look great though. You know, short-term trend is down. Are we holding that long-term dynamic support zone? Are we not? There's enough in it to hold it. Not a buy, unfortunately. Uh, now we've got uh, Anthony Lithium holding up done PLS from memory, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we said it looks good, uh, but is it worth the risk at this stage? Not sure. Liontown doesn't look as good as PLS. I don't think it's worth the risk. I can't see any great reason to be falling over myself to buy this one. In fact, I still think it's in manage the exits territory. Okay, and AGY, uh, Argozi looks better than uh, Lion Town, but hardly inspiring. Uh, there's enough in it to hold it. I can't get to a buy, and, and the close beneath here, I think, would be devastating. That low there, thirty-four point seven five, so thirty-four and a half or lower. Okay, we can see signs of potentially building supply there. Overall trend still up, so going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say hold on that basis. BPT looks good, not great. Uh, it's one I must admit that I, I do get excited about. I really want this one to run, but it is disappointing me, you know, it's disappointing me in terms of it's not doing it as fast as I would like. So I'm going to put that one on watch, negative, but otherwise a hold on the basis that otherwise the trends are still okay. But that one is is very frustrating. Uh, you know, BBT is as frustrating as any of those uranium stocks. Santos I still think is fine. Look, there is some developing 
uh, supply in here. Look at the black candles, a little bit frustrating. Our price section has gone very um, constricted, hasn't it? But I think enough in there again to give it the benefit of the doubt in that the short term trend is up, long term trend is up. I'm happy to go hold. I don't think I can get to buy on Santos just yet. That one's for Anthony NVX. How do we have a bottom? Hey, this is our uh, this is a perennial case study, a cautionary tale of uh, how to get out of stuff or that you need, need to get out of stuff. So can we get in, get back in? We need to see the opposite of this. So if you can imagine the opposite of all of this stuff here, um, that's what we need to see. So we need to see price action turning back to the upside. We need to see some trend establishing candles, so big white candles coming in, you know, high peaks, high troughs, moving averages turn around. I just don't think we're there yet. I think it's early, early days. I do like, however, I do like uh, this candle here. I think this is very interesting. And this candle is very interesting. And what it does, I think, gives us um, you know, a, a, a line in the sand. So that low there, 359, beneath that, close beneath that, it's all over Red Rover. But above that, there is the chance we can build on the demand that is coming into the system. How do I know it's coming to the system? Because I'm looking at this and I'm looking at that, uh, that, uh, give me an arrow, looking at that, and this and this, uh, uh, anyway, this and trying to point to there, okay? I don't mind uh, the volume dynamics coming in here. I don't mind these candles. Hmm, happy to go hold, not a buy yet. Bit of work needs to be done, maybe. Maybe we'll come back to this one uh, in future, ask the experts and get to a buy on it. But I don't think it's there yet. At least I've stopped calling it a sell. How about that? That's a step in the right direction. ARU is the next one. Looks good. I do like this base pattern here. I think there's a lot of demand in this zone. I think it's holding up really well. I like this. I like this. Okay, but I don't like this. And I don't like this, but I do like this. <laughs> so net net. Based upon that, I think you could tell there's enough in there to call it a hold. It's very solid, but maybe not enough just yet to call it a buy. Hey, if this last candle turns out to be a big, white, juicy candle, maybe closing in above 40, I'd actually upgrade this to a buy, even though there's a bit of supply here, because I think it's a strong enough signal. Otherwise, if you're a bit more conservative, close above that level of 42, I think we'd upgrade this one to a buy. I like our Refura. Out of all of those ones that went zero hero, this one only went halfway back to zero, didn't it? I think it's really strong. I think this is go hero again. It's certainly more perspective than many of those other hero to zero charts that we have looked at. Now, getting down the list, I've done those. Okay, nickel mines. I think it looks good, not great. As I said on uh, Osby's a couple of weeks ago, close above 135. Uh, would make this look more interesting. Otherwise, it's very flat. You can just you can see how flat the short-term trends, long-term trends are very flat. Candles equal black and whites. Price action overlapping uh, peaks and troughs. So really not a whole lot to do there. But uh, yeah, 135. It's starting to break it out of the top end in that range. You can see some nice uh, white candles on the close above that. For Anthony King has got uh, COG, uh, which looks pretty good. No complaints there. Happy to go a hold on that one. Candles are looking good. Uh, is this species ending? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think there's anything too sinister in there. So happy to uh, go hold. Maybe not, a, not enough uh, in it to just call it a buy just yet. G6M. I think it's okay. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously we'd love some things to just keep going up. But as long as this low here holds, that's where your demand is coming in. See these, all these indications that demand's coming in, then I'm pretty happy. So that low there is 23. Believe that I've become a little bit cranky, but I think it's holding really well through 25 actually. And this is all good. So a solid, solid hold. Maybe not buying it just on today's candle if you're coming into the, this market for the first time or this, looking at this stock for the first time, but certainly on a close above that high um, 28, I'd be happy to go. Or even if this turns into a white candle going uh, in advance of that close above 28. BHP is the last one, which is 50-50. I don't have to do a whole lot here. Uh, so seeing some nice signs that that long-term trend zone is holding, actually being reflected in the iron ore price and copper just sort of perking back up, nickel perking back up. Maybe there's enough in there. Would I buy it? Depends on how long your view is. Maybe, you know, 48 is better than 54, isn't it, on that basis. Uh, but you kind of have to be a true believer. I'm going to go hold. I'm just going to refrain from calling it a buy because, again, it's about finding the best things for our money at this point in time. And I don't think it's that chart right now. Alan says, Alan's gone in after BHP, which was a big no-no, but he said he joined late. So I'm going <laughs> to give it. Give him the benefit of the doubt. VA looks wonderful, and I'm glad you brought it to my attention. I've been tweeting about this for a while, and I'm happy to continue to hold. In fact, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't buy it. Yeah, $3 is a little bit of a ways away, but I don't think it's going to be a big issue for this one. It's a bit of a slow grind, clearly. You can see, you know, 240, 280. Maybe it's got 280 to 320 in it. So it's not a double, triple. It's not an Arafura where it's going to, you know, it could be a 10 bagger. 
It's, it's just a slow grind, so maybe more of a portfolio stock, but otherwise it looks great. Happy to hold that one and continue to buy, Alan. Next one is FEX, which is Phoenix, another one of those little iron ore stocks, reflecting largely that iron ore price, but otherwise, look, happy to hold that one as well. Is it the, the most exciting one out there? Probably not. What I know about this one is that, you know, digging the stuff out of the ground, not gonna make a bunch of money, but it's a very short mine life. So it's, yeah, I, I don't know how much is in it and whether the multiples are gonna be in there. But look, on the basis of supply demand, which is what the chart tells me, happy to go a hold. I don't think there's enough in it to call it a buy. We are at the bottom of the list. So I'm gonna go over here and tell you that if you, joining me on YouTube in the recording, make sure you, you attend live. I and mean, we have so much fun here. I can see a bunch of people here you know, getting their questions answered. So why don't you join me next week? There's the way you register. Of course, Think Markets, we have all the products you need to trade in terms of shares and CFDs. You can go long and short on any of the things we've talked about today. Head to the website for further details. And of course, we do have a wonderful platform, wonderful customer service and my analysis to boot. If you're new to Think Markets and you'd like to join up, we do have a 10 free trades offer going at the moment. If you say you saw me on Ask the Experts, we'll bump that up by another 10 trades. There are some terms and conditions, very simple, just got to use them within a certain time frame. Other than that, it's all very straightforward. Head to the website for details. And if you're an existing client of ours, refer a friend and you will both benefit. Obviously, they benefit by getting uh, a great product offering and you'll benefit by getting a bunch of free trades. Now, when I say bunch, I mean 200 free trades. That is extraordinary for referring four people over. If you are watching me on YouTube or any of the other socials, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to stay notified of any future analysis updates. And of course, smash that like button to let us know you like what we're doing so we'll continue to do more of it. Apart from that, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. I hope you learned lots. All the best for your investing until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.